Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to WME Garage. This is part one of the video. It's going to be mostly a review of my DIY electric zero turn saga from 2022. I didn't make many videos about it, but I have pictures that I can explain with some flips and, you know, props spliced in. Uh, chapter markers down yonder if you want to skip ahead. I realize it might be a little boring just watching this slideshow. So, kind of like Mitch, I used to fix mowers on the side. I still do, but I used it to. Several years ago, one of my friends ended up buying one of the Ryobi 54-inch uh, zero-turn electric mowers. When I checked it out, I couldn't believe how much of a toy the whole thing was, other than the fabricated deck, which was the only solid piece on it. And all that for almost six grand. The mower blades are wafer thin, and it had lead-acid batteries that people don't cycle correctly, because lead-acid can only be cycled down to 50% to maintain your capacity and then they need to be replaced every one or two years. And on top of all that, it only drives around at five miles an hour. You've got all this power, let's go ahead and use it. So for the next two years, that thought churning in my head was to build my own electric zero turn with decent batteries, quite a bit more heavy duty. Robert from Aging Wheels posted a video about how that exact mower was a bad value and the lead acid batteries were a fatal flaw and that was my final straw. Sometimes it's just easier to get an idea out of your head and possibly fail than to keep living with it just taking up brain cycles. In the summer of 2022 I found a 54 inch Hustler zero turn with bad hydro and a good motor so it was a perfect place to give this a go. I could take the motor, put it on the shelf for something else, tear this one apart, not feel bad about taking apart. A working mower. EZTR version 1 was basically a proof of concept and a learning experience for me. I didn't know if this whole thing was potentially going to end up in a scrap pile. Turns out it did anyway, but it's not because it failed. I fully stripped down the chassis and started ordering parts for it. For the deck motors, I figured a little plastic Ryobi push mower can cut grass. The motor would be good for my project as a starting point. I would eventually end up overpowering it just so that we could cut a little grass, but uh, this mower ended up being a little bit faster than a push mower. The shaft on these Ryobi motors isn't long enough for where the blade needed to sit in the deck or nearly beefy enough, so I ended up machining a one inch diameter extension that the blade bolts on and then it would go down in the deck like that. I also took the fan that used to be on the bottom on the Ryobis inside the plastic and mounted it on the top. The main consideration for mower RPM is the tip speed, which should be a maximum of 215 miles an hour to prevent excessive projectiles coming out of your mower. The first time I spun up the mower, I took a video. This is legit scary. Nope. One handed is. The reason that was so scary is because the dumb e-bike controller was spinning the blade at 5,500 RPM. That's a tip speed of over 300 miles an hour. So to find a solution for that, I looked around for an adjustable controller and I ended up finding these Flipsky VESCs. This one is a 50, sorry, 75100 and they're available on Amazon or AliExpress, but I wouldn't recommend them anymore. Just get a maker-based VESC. Uh, you can find them on AliExpress, they're much better. I used three of these controllers for the deck motors, these, and one each for the drive motor. Zero turn mowers use the hydraulic drive system to slow down the mower when you're turning or stopping. With electric motors, I had to find something capable of regenerative braking to suit that function. These Flipsky controllers have the capability and they turned out to work just fine for a while. For the drive motors, I found 750 watt brushless gear reduction motors, again on AliExpress, that I'd gear down even further with a chain drive. This is the actual motor that I used for the drive. It's, this is a 750 watt motor. It originally had this gear reduction on it. I've since cannibalized this for another project, but this was the actual drive motor that I started off with. Like I said, I, I used a chain to gear it down for more torque on this particular application 
and I used the controllers and set them to run at 3.6 kilowatts instead of 750 watts. So it had quite a bit more power. Here's a picture where I was getting the pillow block bearings for the drive axles lined up straight before mounting it all together. And here's a video of the first time I spun up the drive assembly when I was still using these little dumb e-bike controllers. Just to make sure everything spun correctly. Just instant. <laughs> to power this contraption, I made a guess that I'd need a 48 volt lithium battery capable of at least 150 amps continuous output, which at the time was exceedingly expensive. I ended up using these UPS lithium ion packs from decommission servers from batteryhookup.com. Inside each one, I wired a 30 amp BMS and I put the heat shrink around it just to cover up all of the exposed terminals. I mounted these with six in parallel and it turns out to be way more expensive than necessary, but hey, you gotta learn somehow. It would have been better off to link them all in parallel, including the balance leads, and use a big BMS, but you live and you learn. The only other thing I needed to do was take the steering input from the sticks and map them into these VESC controllers. To do that, I use these linear displacement sensors. They're made for injection molding automation, and it's just a linear five kilo ohm potentiometer that detects how far this is out by reading a voltage on the output. I just connected one of those to the stick on each side and programmed the controller with the min, max, and center values and we were ready to rip. Here's the setup for the first run. It's basically just two independent go-kart drivetrains, one on each side. The only thing to do now is to give her a whirl. <laughs> and what's the point of having that instant torque if you don't use it? Power! Oh, I didn't do it that time. Woo! <laughs> oh my god. Now after getting the deck on with two thirds of the motors working at a supply chain issue, it was just time for the first cut. First cut. After I got it fully functional with all three blades working, I did the first actual test cut.
work in it. I was so stoked after this, I ended up cutting the whole yard. The only other modification for version one was to get the batteries in an enclosure. I just used this cheap toolbox to contain everything and then wired it all up inside. I mowed with it in this configuration for the rest of 22. It worked, but needed some upgrades and fixes for the next year. One, the deck motors were really not strong enough. I set these to 45 amps and they'd bog down when even, when, even in just a little bit of grass and they started overheating when cutting a normal length grass. The controllers I used for the drive motors are also overheating. They completely cut power once they get up to 80 degrees Celsius, which you wouldn't think is a huge deal, except you gotta remember, it's also the brakes, and this version had no parking brake. One minute you're going up the hill, next you're going backwards down the hill into the street. It's not good. I also wasn't pleased with the battery setup. These modules weren't as secure as I wanted in the box, and the multi-BMS solution was just nuts. The drive motors were also not as peppy as I'd like. Even over driving the 750 watt motors at 3.6 kilowatts, they didn't have the torque that I wanted, even after being geared down. This whole adventure so far had turned out to be so much better than I expected. I was stoked to just keep trying to work out the bugs and modifying over the winter and hitting next season even better mower. Thanks for watching. Later. Woo! <laughs>